the, the other time, first time I went go live, I didn't realize there was the 15 second delay. And you're like, what's going on? It's not, it's not happening. <laughs> I forgot to mute myself, and after fifteen and after fifteen and minutes, the, I started the other talking. Time, first time I went go live, I didn't realize there was a fifteen second delay. I'm like, what's going on? It's not. It's not happening. <laughs> See, like yeah. that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, I'll uh, put your slides on, and um, I'll put a little note into the. People. It's uh, quite amazing. I still can't believe it's possible to actually organize this kind of big conference, uh, you know, just purely virtual. <laughs> yeah, purely vir virtual and 100% volunteers. Um, yeah. yeah. I've got to say, I, the um, StreamYard software is very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, looks pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like we have a, a good run of, of QGIS talks. I think um, five of the six are on QGIS, and I think it's uh, point clouds, vector tiles, and um, uh, something and, with OpenStreetMap plugin, I guess. NOSM. That's right, NOSM. So those were the three I was on top of, and <laughs> now we have the mm -hmm. other, the other three. I see. Do, do you also get um, to see somewhere the counts of like watchers? Not, not really. Um, you see a little bit if you keep in. Uh, Keep track on the on the main app. You can um, you can see people commenting. You can see the questions going in, and um, at the end, a lot of people uh, do a you know clap or a heart or something. So you see the the signals mm -hmm. go up. But I, I haven't. There's there's no place that I found the the count number. I actually mm -hmm. asked that at some point, and I understood that Venulus exports some kind of a spreadsheet with all kinds of statistics, but most probably that will happen at the end, so the conference just runs smoothly, and afterwards some statistics will be available, probably. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. so, so for everyone who's... Uh, uh, there's all the, <laughs> the signals. So for everyone out there, we'll start in about uh, one more minute. Okay, I think um, we'll get started. Um, good afternoon from North America and Latin America. Good evening to Europe and maybe good morning to, uh, to Asia, Asia PAC and Australia. Um, really pleased to have you at Phosphor G 2021. 
Um, welcome to the Salta Room. Uh, we have a great lineup uh, for the next three hours um, with a seeming focus on, on QGIS and all the, the great developments that are, that are happening right now. Um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Martin Dubais. Um, uh, Martin got into QGIS development uh, back in 2005 when he was at university, and he uh, stayed, stayed with, with uh, QGIS development uh, up until the current times. He's working at Lutra Consulting, uh, where he delivers open source GIS to clients and helping open source GIS ecosystem, the, the ecosystem grow, um, and he's currently based in Slovakia. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to Martin, and um, we'll uh, rejoin uh, back in uh, about 20 minutes uh, and take your questions. It's all you, Martin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the intro, Michael. Uh, so let's uh, dive into Point Clouds and QGIS. Um, just briefly about us, I work at Lutra Consulting, as Michael said already, we do services around open source GIS, so it's mainly consulting and development. Our main focus is uh, development uh, for QGIS. Um, and uh, among other things that we do is uh, we have a, a suite for uh, mobile data collection, which consists of uh, input and merging. So input is the mobile app available for Android and iOS and merging is uh, the server side responsible for the uh, data synchronization and all that stuff. Um, both of these things are free and open source. And uh, yeah, if you are after some uh, system that is uh, based on QGIS and it's open source, uh, just give it a try. Um, so, and uh, let's go straight to point clouds. Uh, so point cloud data, I think um, we don't need to do a big introduction here. Uh, it's increasingly popular uh, data type. So most of the time um, it comes from two different, let's say data sources. Uh, one is the laser scanning or LIDAR, where you have a plane or a car or just a tripod with uh, the LIDAR sensor, which can look like this. And uh, with the laser beams, it calculates the uh, the points uh, of, the, of the returns. The other option is to use uh, photogrammetry, which essentially means uh, you take a bunch of pictures with a camera and then use some uh, software to do the analysis of the imagery and to reconstruct the 3D scene. So the point cloud data, are really composed of uh, points in, in 3D space. So it's X, Y, Z coordinates, and then a bunch of uh, extra attributes. So it depends what your source is, but for example, if you have LiDAR data, then you get uh, usually the intensity of reflection, the return number, number of returns, and so on. Optionally, you can have things like color or mm, classification if your point cloud is already classified. Um, the industry standards for um, point cloud data is um, the file types that are either LAS or the LAZ, which is based on the former and is uh, introducing uh, very nice uh, compression. Um, so um, there are already some other existing tools uh, in the free and open source world that uh, allow you to view point clouds. Um, two that really uh, are worth mentioning is uh, uh, Poetry, which is a JavaScript library. So for those who want to do the visualization on the web, and then there is uh, Cloud Compare, which is a desktop application for dealing with uh, point clouds, and it can do co also quite a lot of analysis. Um, and so, uh, how about the point clouds in QGIS? So. Um, when we started to talk about the, the option to have uh, point clouds also as a native uh, layer type in, in QGIS, some people were saying like, oh, that's, uh, that's weird. Uh, it's uh, just some kind of raw uh, product that is not really meant for, um, for ordinary users. And it's meant to be uh, further 
processed into some derived products like um, digital elevation models and so on. But uh, but still, there was more and more interest. Uh, so we thought, let's uh, give it a try. And um, the main reason uh, why we did it is that um, people just want to see the point cloud data integrated with uh, their other GIS data as well. And um, while there are various um, viewers of um, uh, point clouds, um, very few of them actually uh, integrate really nicely into, into GIS systems. So what we did, we started a crowdfunding campaign in summer um, 2020, and um, we uh, got together with um, uh, North Road and uh, Hobu. North Road is based in Australia. Hobu uh, is uh, in, uh, in the States. And um, together uh, we've done this uh, campaign. And um, the scope of the work was really limited to be able to load the data in um, either LAS or LAZ uh, format and uh, as a ordinary kind of uh, map layer in QGIS and then do the visualization both in 2D, the usual uh, top-down view in uh, QGIS or the, in the uh, 3D. So fortunately, the uh, campaign was successful and we were able to um, uh, do the implementation. So now when we want to do the uh, visualization of point clouds, there are some challenges uh, to that. So the first one is that it's a typically massive amount of points. So when people talk about vector layers, um, usually something like in order of uh, a million of uh, features or points, that's already a lot. Uh, but uh, in, um, in point cloud data, that's really nothing. So we talk about millions or billions or sometimes trillions of points here um, in these um, websites that hosts uh, LiDAR data from the US National Survey. You can see that uh, they have in the database uh, over 30 uh, trillion points. So it's a lot. Um, and then the other challenge is that the commonly used formats, they are not really optimized for um, 2D and 3D viewing. So you can think of it as a kind of bag, big bag of points. Um, so if you want to process the whole data set, that's fine, that's, uh, that works. But if you just want to quickly pick uh, some small uh, amount of points to, to visualize um, uh, the data, then that's not really the, the use case um, or that where uh, these formats trying to solve. So um, what one needs to do, and this is a bit more technical, um, is, is to do some kind of organization or indexing of, um, of the data set. Uh, there is one popular data structure called Octree, uh, which uh, like, uh, looks a bit like this, that um, it's, a, it's a tree where in the root you have one cube and then with every further level down, it's, uh, the cubes are um, getting divided in all uh, directions. And um, in this kind of way, um, you can split the data into smaller chunks. So like each node uh, that is here can contain, let's say, just relatively small amount of points, like tens of thousands. And uh, then the, the client that does the visualization only needs to pick a bunch of uh, these nodes that are necessary to, um, uh, to do the uh, drawing and the rest of the data can be ignored. So, so the access is uh, fast and the amount of data is, uh, is low. Uh, there are a couple of formats uh, that can be used for uh, this kind of indexing. In QGIS, we have decided to go with uh, EPT. Um, and another uh, important um, thing to mention is uh, we didn't want to start um, 
everything from scratch. So um, we chose to integrate the uh, Poodle library, uh, point data abstraction library, uh, as another dependency for QGIS to do the uh, dealing with uh, point cloud. So Poodle is kind of Google for point cloud data, um, set very in a very simplified way. So it has various drivers to read, write formats. And uh, moreover, it has a wide range of filters for manipulation of data, which you can um, combine into uh, pipelines. So something like this, uh, you have a reader, some filters, and then some, some writers. So that's all you can do with uh, Poodle. Um, right now in, in QGIS, we only use very small part of what the Poodle library uh, offers. So there is still lots uh, more to, uh, uh, to use later. Um, so now um, for more practical um, approach, like what, uh, how do we load the point cloud data in QGIS? Uh, so right now we support just the LAS and LAZ uh, formats and um, you you use like the ordinary way as you are used to so either you use the the browser panel and there you the las laz files are um, recognized like this or you can drag and drop them from file browser or you can use the data man source manager to to pick a uh, to pick the file and uh, edit so when you uh, add the file for the first time um, the it will start the indexing. That's uh, the creation of this op tree data structure I have talked about. And it creates the EPT uh, subdirectory. So you can see here that, uh, for example, these data sets, uh, they were already um, uh, indexed. The initial indexing takes uh, a while, maybe a minute or so, uh, but it only happens uh, once. Uh, so. Uh, you just need to wait for the first time, but then it's uh, fast. Uh, then when it comes to rendering, um, we have three main uh, types of render uh, for both 2D and 3D uh, view. So uh, one option is to uh, have rendering based on a single attribute. Um, so you can choose whether it would be, let's say, Z coordinate or intensity of returns or whatever other attribute you have there. Or you can have the uh, rendering based on classification if your uh, point cloud is uh, classified already, or based on color. So some of the point clouds, they are uh, colorized, especially those uh, that come from photogram uh, photogrammetry. So um, that's another option. Here are some examples. So this is a um, QGIS with um, one sample data set uh, loaded. This one is using the um, uh, rendering using classification. And you can see here um, on the right side, there are all these different um, standard classes um, and uh, some other parameters that you can set up in this uh, usual layer styling uh, doc widget. And here, of course, is the, is the 2D rendering. Um, here's the same data set, but uh, with uh, different uh, render. So this one is the um, attribute mode by ramp rendering, and we are sh um, rendering the uh, elevation. So uh, Z attribute, you can set the minimum, maximum, you can configure your color ramp, interpolation methods, um, how many classes, you can modify the uh, ranges. It's uh, pretty much the same thing as uh, you are used to for, uh, for raster layers. Um, and then the third one I mentioned is the rendering based on colors. So this renderer is called RGB, where you have the red, green, uh, blue uh, attributes. And you can see that the, this is a point cloud, but uh, it kind of looks more like um, uh, aerial uh, imagery. So um, now what can we do with all this? So first of all, we can combine uh, point clouds with other GIS data. So as I said, the point cloud layer, it's just like any other layer. So you can combine it, do some uh, things like set the transparency, do um, 
like some layer effects here. Um, this is um, OpenStreetMap uh, background. And on top of it, I have uh, a point cloud, which is filtered to show only buildings in the with the red color and uh, high vegetation, so trees with the, with the green color, with some uh, semi-transparent uh, uh, view. Um, you can, for example, uh, trace features of your interest. So in this screen, I have just some satellite imagery and on top of it, the point clouds uh, filtered to only uh, buildings. And here you can see I have uh, traced some uh, some buildings. So these are some of the use cases for 2D, but um, most interesting is uh, really to, to view the point clouds in, in 3D. So um, you can you can simply open the 3D map view. And for example, if you have the point cloud that's uh, colorized, you can get a nice uh, 3D look like this. You can move uh, there, zoom in, zoom out, uh, rotate the camera. Um, one uh, nice effect that we have implemented is uh, so-called idone lighting. So normally here on the left side, if we, we would just uh, show the colors of the classification, the, uh, you don't really see that much detail. But if you um, enable the idone lighting in 3D, uh, you get um, something much more detailed because it uh, shows the silhouettes and it uh, gets the uh, shading um, estimate. Uh, here are some more examples like from the top view, from oblique view, whether it's classified or um, view based on uh, attribute. Uh, you can do filtering based on classification. So here, for example, there is just uh, ground. This is just buildings. This is just the vegetation. You can do all these uh, fun things. And you can even like combine these things together. So this is a 3D view, which uh, has like uh, vegetation just in green, the ground just in shades of uh, gray based, of, uh, based on intensity, and uh, buildings are in different uh, color ramp um, also with um, rendering based on intensity. Uh, you can also use uh, shadows in, in 3D. So um, that's another kind of effect uh, it, that you can see that uh, the, the trees are like, different colored uh, from one side than from the other, or you can see the effect here in the, on the roofs. Uh, more recent addition is the support for remote EPT datasets. So if you already have a data set that has been converted to this EPT format. Um, you can even use it uh, remotely from some HTTP uh, web server. So you just uh, put the um, URL there. This is from the US uh, National LiDAR and uh, you get um, the tiles loaded just like you would get with um, raster or vector layers. Um, then in for 3D functionality, um, there has been added the work mode for navigation. So um, if you switch to work modes, you can actually um, move um, in like more, uh, let's say, easy way um, and just walk through the uh, say, town. Um, then there are some more fixes coming in QGIS 3.22, which comes out in October. Um, there hasn't been like big new features, just some uh, smaller uh, improvements. And uh, because I will run soon out of time, so let's have a look at what comes up next. Um, so one thing I would like to uh, talk about is the cloud-optimized uh, point cloud. That's a new initiative uh, started by, by Hobu um, quite recently. The idea is similar to uh, the cloud-optimized geotiffs that you may be already familiar with. And uh, just like cloud-optimized geotiffs are just uh, ordinary geotiffs with something extra in it, the same idea is with uh, these cloud-optimized point clouds. It's just a uh, LAZ file 
but it's reorganized for more efficient access. So if you would use this kind of uh, LAZ file, you don't need to further pro uh, process the, um, um, the data and it's already um, ready to be used uh, as it is and even from, from a remote web uh, server. The, the spec is being finalized these days, so hopefully in coming months uh, uh, it will be supported uh, in QGIS as well. And uh, another piece of news I would like to share is uh, that um, we have been hearing um, requests from the community that uh, there should be more features uh, added to, to the point cloud. Um, compared to what we have now. So uh, we are preparing another crowdfunding campaign. Um, it will be launched uh, soon, in uh, still in this autumn. Uh, I don't want to uh, say more as uh, we are still working on it. So stay tuned for, for more details. And that's it uh, from me. So thank you. Uh, this is my email or Twitter, if you'd like to, to follow us. That was, that was great, uh, Martin. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, as I saw you bring up the labs and the last stuff, I can't help but uh, remember that I just heard that uh, Martin Eisenberg um, recently died. He's one of the, the great innovators in point clouds and LAS and LAS tools um, and a super talented guy. And, uh, we all will, will miss him for sure. Um, I have one question yeah, I'd like absolutely. to get. Yeah, rest in peace, Martin. Um, uh, I have one question I'd like to just throw in at the front just because I'm curious about these. Um, I don't need to know the money. I'm just curious, how many individuals participated in the first round of crowd crowdfunding uh, mm -hmm. that got this project going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, if I remember correctly, it was somewhere over 50 different uh, organizations and individuals. Fantastic. So I'm going to um, skip the first question because the first question was, uh, what are your thoughts on the cloud optimized format? And uh, you had a whole slide on that, so that's great. Um, the second question was, is there a plan for uh, 3D editing? Um, yes, eventually. Um, people often ask about uh, 3D rendering, uh, sorry, 3D editing, but um, in fact, like there are just so many things uh, that like one can put under this umbrella that um, it, uh, I think we will get there, but it will be difficult, you know. Uh, when you think about software like Blender, that one is all based around uh, editing in 3D and it's, uh, it's just, like a really wide spectrum of features one possibly need to uh, give users. So yeah, something we would like to do, but uh, I think uh, we still need to get first thing first. Yeah, good, good point. Um, one more question. Uh, there are a couple more in. I think we have time for t uh, two or three more. Um, uh, I'm, why uh, are point clouds in QGIS slower than in a browser? Um, suggestion is configuration is the same point cloud on a local machine. Um, QGIS 3D views versus poetry. Um, there could be several reasons. Um, and that's also something we would like to look at um, in the upcoming crowdfunding to, to make things even more robust and faster. So. I'm, I'm sure things um, can and will be improved with some more caching of data and um, yeah, using some other compression methods and just doing things smarter. Mm. Um, any thoughts on using mesh data abstraction language, MDAL and QGIS and Crayfish plugin? Um, in, I'm wondering in what kind of uh, context, because uh, the, um, the MDAL library is already like fully supported by QGIS and uh, the 3D view 
supports visualization of uh, mesh data coming from from this library. Um, so maybe the uh, the question is like about like uh, I guess turning point clouds into into meshes. Um, yeah, that's that's something that um, like other software like let's say Poodle already are able to do. So hopefully we will also have the chance to integrate this kind of functionality from there into directly into QGIS. Great. So um, one last question. I apologize to those of you who asked questions that we won't get to, but um, please feel free to um, reach out to Martin or his company um, if you have uh, further further questions about this initiative. Um, but the last question is, um, is there some kind of threshold where we'll drastically slow down? Um, I was thinking of something similarly. You were sort of saying, you know, the, the typical um, uh, indexing time is like a minute, but I assume like if there are a trillion points, it would be more than a minute. Um, or, you know, um, is, are, are there, are there any sort of limits that you would recommend against? Mm -hmm. So I guess one limit is um, when like loading and indexing the data, and the other limit is when when doing the actual rendering. Uh, and also there are differences whether you do the 2D or 3D rendering. So for for rendering, uh, especially for the 3D rendering, we have a so-called point budget. So you can say depending on your graphics cards and your machine like let's say you can limit i want to show maximum five million points at the time and we will not use more so that it doesn't uh, burn your computer um, with 2d rendering it's not really that a big deal because it just takes longer it's not like we would be doing 60 frames uh, per second and for for indexing um it's kind of really um, uh, limited by your uh, storage and by your uh, memory of your computer. So, but if you have, let's say, several hundred megabytes um, uh, file, compressed file, uh, that should still load fine on average computer. If you have some like huge data set of the whole country, then uh, the best thing to do is to use the a tool called Entwine, which um, supports these advanced um, workflows that you would, uh, let's say, run it on multiple machines on um, on AWS, and then merge the results together. Awesome. Well, well, thank you again, Martin. Um, we're going to set up um, Etienne for the next um, presentation, but a uh, super super job and. Uh, Really cool to see it. Uh, see those images inside of QGIS. Nice, nicely done. Thank you. It's been Thank my you pleasure. so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.